We've taken a look at some of the best minor league stadiums on this channel, but I just got back from Fargo, North Dakota, and it inspired me to highlight the ballparks of some lesser known leagues, specifically the Major League Baseball Partner Leagues. Teams within these leagues operate as professional franchises by recruiting and paying players, However, unlike with minor league baseball, they're not attached to any particular major league team, which essentially makes them professional independent teams. There's a total of four leagues operating as MLB partners, so today we're going to highlight some of the best ballparks within each of those leagues, starting with the American Association of Professional Baseball. We're starting here because the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks happen to play within the American Association. And again, I just took this awesome vacation there, I explored Fargo for the first time, went there to run a half marathon, you know as you do. And I wound up going to this ballpark twice because I loved it so much on the first visit, but yeah, super cool field that actually shares its facilities with North Dakota State, home to the Bison baseball team there. Well, it's got plenty of modern amenities. It does have this very old look to it, and uh, actually it's it's kind of meant to mimic old Yankee Stadium. I mean, the outfield dimensions are supposed to be a perfect copy of old Yankee Stadium, which was done to honor the hometown kid of Roger Maris, a Yankee legend who grew up in Fargo, North Dakota. So super cool kind of honoring that tradition of keeping his name alive. Of course, like he He's a huge deal in Fargo. There's a whole museum dedicated to him that I went and checked out while I was there as well. Just super cool tie to the hometown kid, so to speak. Absolutely beautiful stadium, super, super fun environment with the Fargo Dome looming ominously out there in left field. Just uh, had a blast at the stadium, can't wait to go back. Next up, I wanted to highlight Impact Field, home of the Chicago Dogs. It's opened in 2018 and it has quickly become one of the most popular destinations for seeing baseball in the Chicagoland area. It's got this sleek, modern, almost like futuristic design with these kind of like glass heavy buildings up on the concourse. I just really love the look of this ballpark. It's also praised for being in just in a super convenient location in Chicago and it's right next to O'Hare Airport so it's probably the best ballpark that you're going to get or one of the best in baseball for plane spotting. Just seems like a super super fun environment to be at. Even the name is kind of tongue-in-cheek like the Chicago Dogs you know taking something that the city is really well known for and using that as like your whole marketing thing. I just I, I just love like the kind of fun atmosphere of, uh, of this team and the same can be said for the Lake Country Dock Hounds at Wisconsin Brewing Company Park. So Chicago, really well known for their hot dogs. Well, Wisconsin's really well known for its beer, obviously. And I mean, with a name like the Wisconsin Brewing Company Park, you, you're going to get plenty of that here. This is a actually a five barrel uh, brewing system that the Wisconsin Brewing Company uses to brew beer on site here at this ballpark. And what's really cool is they kind of do it as more of like an experimental kind of thing. So they have like test beers that they produce and serve here. And then if those beers turn out to be a success, they will brew them at a larger capacity at their actual brewing plant in nearby Verona, Wisconsin. So super cool, unique setup here. But apart from that, this ballpark just has really cool like seating options. It's kind of got these sort of couch suite lounges down the first baseline, which looks super cozy. And the best seats in the house of any ballpark are usually right behind home plate. And uh, in this case, with the dock hounds, they actually have like this sort of pavilion patio picnic area right there behind home plate. Uh, it's a pretty bold approach to take like your best selling and uh, you know most highly sought after seats right there behind home plate and kind of making it more of like a pavilion area. I really, I really, really like that approach. And yeah, like we said with the Chicago Dogs, looks like a super, super fun ballpark to be at. Staying in Wisconsin, let's go check out Franklin Field, home of the Milwaukee Milkmen. Also a really new ballpark that opened in 2019. And like we said with Chicago, this is just another sleek, modern, beautiful looking, gorgeous ballpark with some great sight lines. And I love the outfield seats. And you don't get that a whole lot at this level with uh, outfield seats. So I always appreciate that more when it's there. And the bullpen views, I always love when you're kind of right there, right up on top of the bullpens, you can see the pitchers warming up. Really adds like kind of a layer of intimacy at this ballpark. And like the Lake Country Dockhounds, this ballpark has artificial turf. Because this is Wisconsin, you're gonna get a ton of precipitation early in the spring. The last ballpark we're gonna talk about here in the AAPB is Blue Cross Park here, home of the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. The first of a few ballparks we're going to talk about in this video uh, up north of the border there in Canada. Pretty high seating capacity, almost 7,500 seats available in this ballpark, which you'd expect Winnipeg's a larger city and this uh, ballpark draws really well. It faces away from those downtown buildings due to the sun setting in the west, so this kind of faces more east along the Red River, but you still get great views all around in this ballpark. You can see out there in right field the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Super beautiful looking architecture and just a really unique kind of landmark to have out there in your outfield. I just love the look of this ballpark and where it's located there in Winnipeg. I just feel like overall this would be a fantastic ballpark to spend a game at. All right, our next league up is going to give us the Atlantic League, which as you could probably imagine is located more along the East Coast, the Atlantic Coast of the United States. So I think a perfect ballpark to start off with here is the SIUH Community Park. This is home to the Staten Island Ferry Hawks. 
which until recently this ballpark actually was host to minor league baseball. This was home to the Staten Island Yankees in the New York Penn League, which was a league that unfortunately was disbanded after the 2020 season. And it's kind of a shame because that league started in 1939, so a very old historic league, but kind of getting away from the point here, let's focus on this ballpark here. You know, I'm just so happy that a team is able to call this home because this is an absolute gem. You know, New York City land is obviously pretty hard to come by, but this little piece right here, uh, right on the northern part of Staten Island, gives this gorgeous, gorgeous view of New York City, you know, Battery Park there in Lower Manhattan. is kind of the center field backdrop across the Hudson River. And this ballpark is situated right next to St. George Ferry Terminal there in Staten Island, hence, you know, why they're called the Ferry Hawks. Man, I just can't think of like a better way to commute to and from a game. Imagine being in Manhattan and just saying like, you know what, let's take the ferry and just go see a Ferry Hawk game. Because as soon as you get to the terminal building, you just walk right over and there's the ballpark. Like I just, I don't know, I, th I think stuff like that is super unique. This is high on my list of ballparks that I want to check out. Just beautiful, beautiful beautiful ballpark. Next up, let's take a look at the York Revolution who play at Wellspan Park, opened in 2007. I think this ballpark is kind of punching pretty high above its weight. York County alone has a population of almost 500,000, so it's an area that's really deserving of having a hometown team to root for, and yeah, the York Revolution, um, excellent, excellent ballpark here. Probably its most notable feature is this wall that they call the Arch Nemesis over there in left field. You know, there's another uh, famously tall wall in uh, left field in baseball, which would be the Green Monster in Fenway. The Arch Nemesis is actually six inches taller than the Green Monster, so just that alone, I mean, the York Revolution and really pride themselves on this really tall wall. That's a fun fact. You can tell your friends at parties that there's a professional ballpark in baseball that has a taller wall than the Green Monster in Fenway. Of note too, there's also a cool little carnival area in center field for kids to play at. And uh, what, a, what a great way to take in a game, you know, just at the carnival in center field, watching the York Revolution. I love it. I just think this is a fantastic ballpark. Another ballpark I think is punching above its weight here is home to the High Point Rockers there at Truist Point. This is a beautiful newer ballpark, again, with great sight lines and seating all around right there in downtown High Point. And I love this because High Point, North Carolina is a manufacturing town, very famous for its furniture, hence what we have the rockers that comes from rocking chairs. You can see that in their super fun logo, actually. And I love that incorporation of the city that you can see the old buildings and the factories like from within the ballpark. It's a really great way of tying in your city to the ballpark. And I think that this just did a fantastic job when it opened up in 2019. And ditto to the Charleston Dirty Birds at Go Mart Ballpark. This is also right in the middle of its downtown in Charleston, West Virginia. So you get the beautiful view of the historic buildings all around, including this factory warehouse building over there in Wright Field that doubles as the box office. It has this really cool, you know, power alley painted right there on the side. I just love the look to that. You know, again, we can see inspirations either borrowed from or given to a major league counterpart with the warehouse there in Baltimore, a very famous structure for the Orioles. Kind of something like that toned down a little bit more here in Charleston. I just love that look. Yeah, this is a gorgeous ballpark. And the Hagerstown Flying Boxcars here, a brand new stadium. This just opened in 2024 and they started play here. And Meredith Park, Mercius Park, I'm, I'm still not 100% certain how to pronounce this, but you're kind of seeing a trend now of these downtown ballparks that showcase the beauty and charm of these small cities here. And this one here in Hagerstown, home of the Flying Boxcars, Love the name, love the look to this ballpark. Yeah, this is an absolute gem, as are so many ballparks in not just the Atlantic League, but also the American Association of Professional Baseball, the Pioneer League, which we'll get to in a moment, and the Frontier League, which is what we're gonna talk about right now here, starting with the Capitales of Quebec. You know, my French is, uh, it's not, it's not great. It's non-existent actually, but this is uh, the French spelling and pronunciation of capitals, so capitales. They play here at Stade Canac, which I hope I'm saying that correctly. Regardless, this is a stadium that has seen its ups and downs over the years with various teams coming and going, several of which have, have served as minor league baseball, but the capitales began playing here in 1999, a year in which this ballpark saw major renovation and it completely revamped the interest in this ballpark, which has been around for a long time. I mean, 1939 is just a huge, chunk of time like we're talking 85 years of this ballpark being played at and personally I just feel like it's aged so well I love the old look of this ballpark that I mean that always just like plays a little heavier in some of my opinions here which again you know these these videos here are just completely based on my opinion but I just really love the look and feel of some of these older ballparks here they just have this indescribable charm which is just it's like lightning in a bottle you know it's just it's impossible 
able to duplicate and Quebec here is just super fortunate to be able to play in a ballpark this beautiful and this historic and uh, ditto to the Agles, the Eagles of Trois Rivières. Yeah, I'm so sorry to anyone who speaks fluent French. I'm, I know I'm butchering this, but I'm giving it my best and that's, uh, that's all anyone could ask. Very similar capacity as the ballpark we just looked at in Quebec and a very similar uh, opening year. This opened in 1938, so just a year before the ballpark there in Quebec. Now there's a lot that could be said about this ballpark that could also be said about Quebec. You know, they just share a lot of similar characteristics, kind of this old grandstand look throughout the ballpark as far as like the seating with pretty simple and modest amenities. But I couldn't include one on this list without the other. And again, I just love the look of this ballpark as well. It's got this awesome stately look to it, ton of charm. And this ballpark and the one in Quebec are separated by only about 130 kilometers. So if you're going to visit one, you might as well visit the other one too. And honestly, that's just a trip that I really want to make down the road. So I had to include them both on this list. Two beautiful ballparks there in Canada. But let's get back stateside for a second. Check out the Tri-City Valley Cats who play here at Joseph L. Bruno Stadium open in 2002. Another team here that used to be a part of the New York Penn League of Minor League Baseball. So ballpark here that was uh, built for minor league baseball in mind. This one, super, super popular fan favorite ballpark, routinely sets attendance records kind of right there in Troy, New York with Albany and Schenectady making up the other two cities of the Tri-City name. Highly praised for putting on a good quality, family fun, friendly atmosphere and what more could you want in a ball game? Next, let's check out the Florence Yalls at Thomas More Stadium. This is a team that just knows how to have fun. You know, with a name like Yalls, you would kind of expect it to. But that name, Yalls, is not just a gimmick kind of name here because there is a water tower in Florence, Kentucky, where this team is located that says Florence Yall with that kind of red and white striping there. Pretty famous landmark in the area, which is kind of cool because there's a slide uh, carnival area in left field here at this ballpark that matches that water tower and I don't, I don't know I just think that that's silly and uh in like the best way and again we have another ballpark here that's just praised for being very family fun atmosphere and a great one to take a game at and who could argue that great looking ballpark here all right rounding up the frontier league I wanted to focus on the Washington wild things this is another ballpark that I have been to personally this is kind of halfway between Wheeling West Virginia and Pittsburgh Pennsylvania and I lived in Pittsburgh for a few years I only took in one wild things game and I talked a little bit more about it in the video that I made where I was ranked all of the logos in this league here. So if you want to hear a little bit more detail about this ballpark, go check that video out. But all you really need to know for right now is that this ballpark is an absolute blast. It, I've got been to so, so many ballparks, so many ball games at all kinds of different levels. And this by far is one of the most fun ballparks I have ever been to. One thing that always stuck out to me is that they give away uh, free cookies and milk and it's not limited to just kids. I found that out uh, with like a beer in each hand. I walked up and did this whole balancing thing of uh, coming back to my seat with with hot cookies and cold milk, which should never really work at, you know, during like a hot summer night, but it totally did. It's so damn hot. Milk was a bad choice. And I mean, they've got a mascot here who is like the wild thing himself. And I'd argue that he probably gives the Philly Fanatic a run for his money in terms of his crowd engagement. And our final league that we're going to focus on today, last but certainly not least, is the Pioneer League, a league that is so near and dear to my heart. So to kick it off, let's start with the Glacier Range Riders, a brand new team that started play in 2022. My family and I had season tickets to every game that year. And this personally is now my quote unquote hometown team because I grew up in Northwest Montana. And what a blessing it is to have such a beautiful ballpark here to see my hometown team play at every time I get to go visit family back home. I get to experience it again here in a few weeks when I go back to Montana. I'm so excited. Glacier Bank Ballpark here actually won BaseballParks.com Ballpark of the Year last year and for good reason. I mean it's just so beautiful. It's situated halfway between Whitefish and Kalispell, Montana right on kind of the skirts of Glacier National Park, hence how this team has its name, the Glacier Range Riders. But even aside from the backdrop that you get of the mountains there, you know, the woodwork that goes into the buildings on this concourse, which sits at ground level too. So you, you like park and then you walk in and the seats are below you in this bowl, which adds to the effect that the mountains give in the background there. I just absolutely love this ballpark. I did a whole trip to this ballpark to see their first ever home game. Check that out up here as well. Super fun video to put together and you can see more of the details about what makes this ballpark so unique and so beautiful and kind of a must on anyone's bucket list for you know ballparks to check out but another ballpark in the pioneer league 
week. Absolutely must see. This one I have not been to. This is Lindquist Field, home of the Ogden Raptors. I mean, you've got a gorgeous backdrop of mountains at this ballpark as well. This is the Wasatch Mountains there in Utah. We talked about beautiful views of the same range when we talked about Smith's Ballpark in Salt Lake City, when we talked about the best ballparks in minor league baseball. I mean, this is one of the best views in all of baseball. I just love the mountains, they feel like they're just right on top of you here. Just a super dramatic natural backdrop there. You've got the Ogden Latter-day Saints Temple right there in center field. I mean, does it get more Utah than that? But I think the exterior of this ballpark deserves some love too. Like I just love like the look of this pretty amazing ballpark all around. Let's go back to Montana here for our next ballpark. This is Dellard Park on the Billings Mustangs. Another ballpark that I've been to several times. The whole ballpark is kind of just on this singular concourse, which is at street level. So the seating bowl is sank in again, like we talked about with Glacier. And this gives a great view of the famous rim rocks out there in center field, the rim rocks of Billings, Montana. And you're always gonna feel like you're kind of right on top of the action again, because it's, it just sits at street level. I love that vibe. I love that feel of the ballpark. And again, you don't get a lot of these 360 degree ballparks at this level. And that's a feature that I think every ballpark, regardless of professional level of play should strive for. It seems like a no brainer, but trust me, the ballparks that don't have the ability to walk around the entire playing field feel a lot more constricting and less engaging. So something as simple as just being able to walk around the ballpark, like take notes, that should just be essential. That, that, come on, don't restrict me just down to the first and third baselines. Anyway, that's a whole tangent. This ballpark's great, must check it out. And at, at our fourth pick here in the Pioneer League, we're staying in Montana. This is the Great Falls Voyagers who play at Centene Stadium. I'll be here in a few weeks as well, visiting a very close friend of mine, get to check out this ballpark again. I've been to it uh, quite a few times. This is one of the oldest in the league, opened in 1940, and it does show signs of its age, but keeps that old charm. Again, something about old ballparks with that, I, I call it charm. Some people might call it grungy or falling apart or outdated, and you're not wrong if you take that approach when you look at ballparks like this, but I kind of look at it more of a ballpark as having like character, and charm and history and i'm a sucker for that and yeah a ballpark this old still in operation still getting the fans out still being a blast to be at i mean i'm a sucker for that this is right off the missouri river uh you get a great breeze coming in because of that and it just makes for just an awesome awesome ballpark to be at they do a gimmick in the i believe it's the sixth inning bottom of the sixth they call it the beer batter where if the leadoff uh batter for that inning gets a base hit i think it's one dollar beer for the whole inning something like that i don't know i i, I could do a uh review of this ballpark because again I'm gonna go check it out here in uh, just a couple short weeks and I'm very very excited to go back and return to it a ballpark that is just very near and dear to my heart and ditto for our final ballpark here in the Pioneer League this is Ogren Park and Allegiance Field home of the Missoula Paddleheads formerly the Missoula Osprey which is what I know them as one of my all-time favorite ballparks right off the Clark Fork River there in central Missoula Montana on certain theme nights you can actually float or raft up to this ballpark for discounted tickets I don't think there's any other team at any professional level that uh, that has an opportunity like that. And I mentioned that they formerly were the Osprey. I still, it, it kind of kills me. I hate the name Paddleheads a lot. I've not really warmed up to that, you know, throughout the, I think it's been like five years now since they've changed the name from Osprey to Paddleheads. And, you know, I think one of the coolest things about this ballpark when they were still called the Osprey is that there is still an Osprey nest out there in center field, which is quite unique because still to my knowledge, there is not another professional ballpark that has the mascot or namesake of the team living in its natural environment at the ballpark. So what was really unique about that was when I was like living in Missoula, attending the University of Montana and working summers uh, for the Missoula Osprey, you would have the Osprey that lived out there in center field in that nest. It would catch fish and fly it around the people in attendance. It was like almost showing off and it was just really cool, super unique thing to have there where you could take in a game and you could point up and you're like, oh damn, the Osprey, like they got a big one today. And it doesn't get any better than that. And to, to, to go away from Osprey to Paddleheads, again, that's a whole other argument that's aside from the point, but this ballpark is still worth visiting even with uh, the silly name change. And it is so near and dear to my heart. I know we stayed in Montana for pretty much all of the Pioneer League, but that's kind of how we go into it when we're talking about some of the best ballparks. And because I'm the one putting these together, I get to bring my own kind of personal bias into these videos. I know that there are so many other ballparks at the independent level and even within the MLB Partner Leagues that are worth celebrating. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure and like and subscribe. Comment down below which ballparks in the MLB partner leagues are your favorites, or just share some great memories or stories you have attending any of these ballparks or any games that you've been to. I always love reading your comments. Again, thanks so much, and we will see you in the next video.